any ridiculous excuse you can come up with to do 98 miles an hour. Being stupid. Nothing else? Yes, That's all you got? Yes, sir. Just being stupid. Yes, sir. So is that what you want me to tell your folks when you got to a wreck? No, sir. I'm sorry. You got your driver's off? Yes, sir, I do. That's ridiculous. Yes, sir. Especially out on this road. How long you been driving? Uh, How old are you? I'm 16, 17. 17? Where's the tobacco at? I have no tobacco. You got it. So I'm going to explain it to you like I explain it to every, every other little 16-year-old kid that thinks they can do 98 miles an hour. Okay. You're not Michael Andretti. You're not Jeff, uh, whatever his name is, the whiny little baby from NASCAR. You've been driving for how long? Maybe a year. Maybe a year. You have no experience whatsoever to be going that fast. No, sir. None. Yes, sir. You're going to end up killing yourself to keep doing that, or you're going to end up killing your friends. Yes, sir. Driving is a privilege, not a right. Yes, sir. And I can yank that privilege if I feel like it. Yes, sir. The judge can yank that privilege. You realize everything now is on a point system. Yes, sir. The more tickets you get, the less points you have. Yes, sir. Which means the more tickets you get, the faster your driver's license is going to get suspended. Then you're going to be paying $2,000 a year. Yes, sir. Driving is a privilege, not a right. You're going to kill somebody out here one of these days. Yes, sir. Let's consider this a wake-up call. Yeah? Yes, sir. I think your parents are going to be Talk. pleasantly surprised. Okay. You said they will? Yes. So thank you for your speed. So I take this message on them for the 18th of next month. That will be 30 days out from the game. Yeah. Down across the edge. Now he's not saying you're guilty. He's saying you're going to contact the court on them for the state post. Okay. how fast you were going. Yes, sir, it is. And so I circled it. Yes, sir. And that's the post speed limit. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. I'm just glad your tire didn't blow out. What are you going to do then? I'm glad a hog didn't come out. A deer. I've seen plenty of deer. Yes, sir. You're going to kill yourself. 98 miles an hour? 50 miles an hour isn't fast enough to stop. It won't happen again. Huh? It won't happen again. I should hope not. Yes, sir. Thank because that's going to be a hefty ticket. There's no reason. If somebody's dying, it's not even a good excuse. That's what they made 911 for. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank Go you. Go save one of traffic, all right? Yeah, the uh, the case stems from a car crash back in a uh, little over two years ago, March 14th of 2012. Uh, the crash happened at about 2 a.m. There was um, our, our defendant, Daniel Froon, was driving his car going at high speeds approximately, we, we think in the low 80s to mid 80s on 1485 heading southbound. Uh, the victim in the case, a young lady named Haley McDonald, who was 16 at the time, she was a passenger in the car. Uh, Froon was 18. They had both been drinking. Froon was intoxicated. He um, basically put his car into a side skid, into a turn, and went off the road. And the passenger side of the car struck a telephone pole, um, causing extensive damage, entrapping both of them. It took the fire department approximately 30 to 45 minutes to cut them both out of the car. They were both transported downtown. Um, uh, for their very serious injuries, uh, Miss McDonald was likely knocked completely unconscious initially, and she never recovered from her injuries and was pronounced dead um, about 5:50 in the morning. What about the uh, came up with the plea deal today? You've been working on a case. It's supposed to go on trial this week. Yeah, we were set to pick a jury um, this morning, but yesterday I spoke with the defense attorney, and after months and months of various, you know, plea negotiations, we were able to work out an agreement that um, all sides were basically reluctantly on board for. Uh, Haley's uh, mom and grandmother uh, understood why we decided to agree 
to this particular plea bargain. I mean, every single case, it depends on the facts of that case. And every single case is different. But what we wanted um, was to make sure that justice was served in this case, that he was sent to prison and, and punished for the crime that he committed, for intoxication manslaughter, for taking Ailey's life. I mean, no amount of time that we could get would you know, ever console any sort of parent who's lost a loved one. It's not going to bring her back, but it will hopefully send a message to the other kids at Caney Creek and the other kids at the local high schools that if you do what this defendant did and if you drive drunk, and then even if you kill one of your passengers, even if you're young and have no criminal history, you're going to be punished accordingly. You're going to be punished harshly, and hopefully kids will get the message. And if a few lives are saved from this, then that's, it's worth it. Now, on this case here, too, uh, what kind of what was his blood alcohol? Uh, it was a, um, I believe from the arrest it was a .11. It was a, it was about a .10, a little over the legal limit. A few hours after the crash. And he was how old? He was 18. I mean, so everybody involved that was drinking was drinking. You know, illegally anyway. They're not old enough to drink as it was. Did they ever find the source of the alcohol? Um, the what we what the investigation discovered was basically um, one of the kids got a stranger to purchase beer for them, and then some of the other alcohol they drank was was uh, basically you know uh, uh, a relative's alcohol whose house that they were at. There weren't any adults at the house. One of the kids was house sitting, and decided to throw this party on spring break. So no spring break. Yeah, it was spring break two years ago when it happened. Okay. What about now, uh, try, instead of trial, I mean, having to put family through this whole thing and everything else, too. I mean, seeing photos of this and having to hear medical examiner testimony and everything else kind of helps family a little bit. Yeah, different. definitely, you know, uh, there, there's finality in a plea bargain. There's no chance of, you know, they don't have to sit here for a week. There's no chance that he's going to get probation and be walking around in the community. I mean, he's going to be serving several years in prison before he gets out. And also there's the finality of there's no plea that's over with at this point point there's no undoing what's been done in this regards you know they're not gonna have to worry about uh, his case coming back on appeal or anything like that they're not gonna have to worry about hearing things you know they're potentially their you know their 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 daughter's name being drugged through the mud as part of this so it's it's um, it's a good resolution in that regards as well because you know they don't have to sit through a painful trial and and he's been held accountable what about finding of a deadly weapon he is part of the plea bargain he played um, there was a deadly weapon finding. He pled true to that. So um, there's been a, the judgment reflects an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon, which affects his parole eligibility. And he's actually half paroled. Yes. Not he's going to have two and a half years that he's going to be yeah. eligible. Yeah, he's going to have to serve at least two and a half years on his five-year sentence before he's eligible to get out. Okay, tell me a little about the night, what you remember. Just want to call okay. Go to the we, yes, we were uh, ready to, already dressed to go to the hospital to see my brother-in-law that was real sick down there. So we were ahead so we could get ahead of the traffic. So when we got the telephone call, uh, when we got the telephone call to, um, uh, for, for Haley, to go to Haley, well, I mean, my first thought was, oh my God, no, she's in bed asleep. You know, I, after I went to bed, changed plans with her aunt and her mama, and I didn't know about it. So I thought she was at home in here asleep, and I just, I just couldn't believe that it was her. I kept thinking, no, it's not her. And they said, well, you know, yes, it is. And, you know, and, and uh, when I heard where she was at that she'd been in a bad accident, I just, I lost it. I totally just lost it right there in the house. And I told my husband, I said, come on, we've got to go. Haley's been hurt. And we take off and drive down there and of course right away you know well the doctor's with her the doctor's with her I said I know but we need to see her you got to let us see her so and he comes back out and just within just a minute he goes well she's passed and he'd already told us that her head injury was irreversible was nothing they could even even begin to do and he, and he said well she but she's passed well I mean it's just like I, I just, I don't even remember what I did. I mean, I, that, they, they, Greg said they were picking me up off the floor. I don't know, but it was the, that's the hardest thing that we've ever had to do. It has, it was just like unreal, you know? And I walked in and I see her and I know she's not there, but it's just like, no, this is not happening. This is my baby girl. She's not dead. But she was, but it, that was, that was tough. We really had a tough time with that that night. And then. I come back home and my yard is filled with all of her friends and you know she was so well liked she had so many friends we had no idea she just had bukoodles of friends and it affected not just our family but all of her friends and and their families it affected a lot of people not just us because she had a lot of good friends and family so it, it was it was a 
tough, and it's still tough. We try not to think about the bad times, but so. That's been that's been a roller coaster. That has been so. We've we finally got to the point. If anything really ever happens, we're not going to believe it till we see it. I mean, it's been so long, and it just has drained our family. It's just tore our family up. What today? Uh, knowing well, yesterday you got a phone call that he was going to go ahead and plead out. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we wasn't happy necessarily. Not that he didn't want to, was going to plead out, but the fact that it was just going to be five years. You know. But then, you know, we, we, we know that there was a chance that he could have got probation. I mean, we, we're, we're aware that that could have happened, and we got to think, well, you know what? Five years is better than probation, and we're going to take it, and we was glad to get that. So maybe we can have a little bit of closure, a little bit. Tell me about court this morning. <clears throat> well, uh, we all walked in, and, um, and then uh, Danny and his attorney and his parents, they brought them in and sat down and everything, and... He got up, had to walk around, do a little thing. We watched him go up to the judge's bench and everything and talk. And the whole time we're just thinking, oh, you know, this, I can't believe this is actually, something is actually happening. And it was just, it was really emotional. But then on the other hand, it was, we just wanted to be excited and happy, you know. So it, it was really it was really, it was bad. It really was. But like I said, we were glad to see something happening. Now, you had a victim impact statement. What yes. That? Just, uh... Let's basically go through it. Go okay. Uh, basically, uh, what I said was that uh, two years ago, we lost our baby girl, the love of our life. She bounced and ran track, and she loved to be outside. She loved to uh, ride her four-wheeler and get in mud and, and, and all of that. And I, you know, and now we don't have her, and uh, and right directly to him. And I said, and that's because of you. And um, now you're going to get some punishment for it, and we're very glad. And that's that's pretty much what I said. During his two years, any remorse from him at all? Any, None. Any from him? None. Not the first. Nothing. Nothing at all. Mm -mm. Nothing. No. Nothing at all. And you know, he's the whole two years he's been at home. He has been kind of on a house arrest, but he's still been able to take college courses, go on with his life. His parents get to come in there and talk to him and visit him, and we go to the cemetery to talk to Haley. We don't get to hug her. But he's all, he's been home for several Christmases, and, and had, his mother has had him for two years. And you know what? Now they might feel get to feeling a little bit little bit of what we've been talking about. What, what, was, I mean, what would you have to say to this whole thing? What you wanted to say and couldn't say this morning, what's what Oh, goodness. Uh, I, honestly, I think there's still a lot more to it than, than we know, or maybe that they even know. I, I, I don't know, but I, we just feel like that that night when that happened, I know that was, you know, there was drinking involved. We, we understand that, but we still feel like Haley didn't get in that car on her own. We, we just do. We know her, uh, we know how she was. We know how, what her character was. And uh, many, many times she would call me or her mom or her Aunt Kimmy and say, hey, so-and-so wants to bring me home, but they're drinking and I don't feel comfortable with that. Okay, we'll come get you. And that's the way she felt. She would have not been in that car without her socks and shoes, without her cell phone, not buckled up. She wouldn't have done it. And I, we still can't believe to this day that she got in there on her own, willingly, you know. So it, it's. Did they ever say where she was going or where they were heading to? Or anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, from what I understand, from my uh, what I, just what I've heard today was that supposedly they were going to go get pot, marijuana. And when you do eighty miles another uh, eighty miles an hour around that curve, guess what? That's what that happens. And that's what he was doing. He had no thought for thought of, of who was with him or anybody was with him and he didn't care. He was he was caught telling people he didn't care what happened to Haley. And you and it's really been hard for us just to stand back and listen to all that and not retaliate in some way or form, you know? So it's been hard. It's been hard on this family. It tore us up and we're still tore up over. It. That's the sign behind you. You got uh, Haley's name at the top and you got quite a few other names on there. Yes. All Caney Creek. All Caney Creek.
Yeah, and this, this has all been since about 2005 now. We're looking yes. at, that was, uh, I think, what, seven, that was seven years. We've got more besides that now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so you're thinking, okay, you would have thought with all the friends Haley had and how hard, how bad it, it hurt a lot of them that they wouldn't still be doing what they're doing. But it hasn't changed, and, and it just seems like nobody cares. It, it, to me, it's, I don't even think Caney Creek cares anymore. Uh, just from some of the things that happens, I just don't. And all these, all these belong to motor vehicle accidents. Yes. Or drunk, drunk yes. Driving, yes. So, or. Something like that. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. First of all, what is your name? Morgan. Morgan. Lell. Spell your last name. L A I L. Okay, Morgan. Tell me a little bit about that night. You were, you at the party also? Yes. What? Tell me a little bit about the party. What, what all happened? Um, Kevin came and picked me up from my house. And um, I told my mom I was staying the night with Haley. And then we, me and Kevin went and picked up Haley from Dalton's. And then we went straight to Kevin's grandma's house. And what, what happened after that? I mean, you, you we got there and we played a couple rounds of beer pong. And um, we took a shot, me and Haley took a shot. I don't really remember anything after that. Just one shot, pretty one knocked you all. Yeah. So you think there may have been something in there? I'm not sure. Where I mean, you? I woke up and I didn't know where I was at. And Haley was already gone when you, yes. when you woke up? Yes. I woke up to a phone call saying that she wasn't here anymore. What do you think about this today? I mean, it's hard. Like, I haven't known what to do. I, I went crazy. I, I will, I've gone through so much. Pretty good friends? Yeah. Oh, oh, we good. we used to hang out all the time. We were always like best friends and then we didn't for a while and that was our first time to hang out in a year. And I just went the wrong way. If anything, I would take it back. Because I told her I didn't want to go at first and I told her, no, we should just stay at my house. And then I don't know what changed my mind. When did you first hear about the accident? It was early in the morning, probably six. In the morning, 